Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. So if you notice this video, uh, I'm not showing any footage because the guest today, right, uh, his name is Jay. He's a bit shy and he don't want to show his face. Nah. So I managed to ask him out to have a breakfast and then to have some chit chat. And now we are actually sitting at the park and having conversation, but you don't get to see his face and my face. Welcome to the channel, Jay. Hello everyone, um, my name is Jay. Um, I'm actually a newbie uh, in the investment world, uh, so I'm also like still learning and still exploring. And I'm happy to have uh, uh, Bunti to, to host me on his channel. So thanks Bunti, I learned a lot from you and also uh, a lot of other um, finance YouTubers. I have a YouTube channel also, uh, a faceless one. So you can support me <laughs> if you have time. Can you explain to, to us like why you don't want to show your face in your YouTube? Huh? Um, I think it's really just uh, I want to be very um, low profile uh, at, at least at this point uh, so maybe one day if let's say my channel can grow bigger then I may consider uh, <laughs> revealing my face Okay, you know like all these YouTubes right there are different contents right some focus on finance some focus on some other topics right but what actually um, attract you to produce finance related content uh, are you from finance background or what, what kind of background are you from? Um, okay, um, quick background of myself, I'm not from the finance industry, I'm doing uh, marketing and uh, outreach. So the reason why I wanted to, uh, uh, I actually started this um, finance YouTube um, channel is really just want to share my views with uh, people out there. Because uh, uh, to be frank with everyone, I'm, I'm very new in the investment world. So when I first started out, um, I, I Google a lot and I, I tried to you know equip myself with all this you know, um, financial knowledge. Then I tried to, you know, bounce off ideas or exchange ideas with my close friends. And I realized, actually, somehow my friends, um, my social circle people, they are not very into this. Mm. Yeah, so I needed a platform to just share my views and also to exchange ideas with people. And uh, I realized probably uh, YouTube is one of the easiest way. Uh, there's another platform that I'm also quite active on is uh, Mumu. Uh, this is not a sponsored post, huh, by the way. Yeah, so I, I, I share my views there and then I realized that, hey, maybe if I want to share to more audience, uh, maybe I can start a small YouTube channel. Yeah, this is how it all started. What kind of content that you are sharing, like what kind of topics that you are covering and, and what was the frequency that you are, you are, your productions of your videos? Okay, uh, my initial intention is really to help uh, newbies like me because when I first started, I was very, very lost. I don't even know, you know what's fundamental, fundamental analysis, technical analysis, or even what CPI, the very, very basic stuff. So I was very lost. So my initial intention was really to uh, create very basic videos, talk about very basic um, financial stuff to help newbies. Yeah, so I have videos like, you know, what are the hotter sectors that you can look at, what are the stocks that you can consider, or uh, even things like um, fundamental analysis in, in five minutes, that kind of stuff. Along the way, I realized uh, all this actually do take out a lot of time. And, and in fact, this is not my priority. I'm not trying to grow my channel to be very, very huge. Yeah, but I still want to keep this going. So recently, I pivot to another style, uh, it's more on a sustenance uh, mode, whereby I do weekly analysis of the, of the market. Uh, and then, um, yeah, it's quite different from what I wanted to do at the start. So just now you're talking about some conversations you have with some uh, on the Moomoo platforms, right? And then there are, you know, like newbies, they ask all sorts of uh, like, like very beginner's questions. Uh, uh, can you share with us, is there any like interesting questions or what so-called newbie questions that you kind of like discuss before? Share, share some stories on that. Okay, uh, maybe I'll categorize them into um, Two, two categories. Uh, one is uh, those that I can answer, the other ones are uh, those that I can't. So those that I can answer, it could be really as simple as, you know, uh, what is CPI, what is FOMC meeting, you know, how does CPI affect the stock market? Uh, very fundamental questions, uh, which I, 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 I think it's okay to ask because back then I also don't know about anything of all this, you know, they were asked even things like, you know, what support resistance levels, uh, uh, the different uh, candlesticks pattern, etc. So those are the ones that I can still answer. Some other um, questions, common, commonly asked questions by newer investors or so-called newbies, could be things like, um, you know, will the stock market be red or green tomorrow? Or uh, how will the market move next week? Will Apple go down to 140 uh, next Monday? Uh, you know, is Monday or Tuesday a better day to buy stocks? 
this kind of questions I think is very hard to answer is because it's way too precise. Maybe, maybe because I'm not that knowledgeable, I'm not a you know day trader, so maybe I can't do that. But I always tell them like I um I don't have a crystal ball, so I really can't do um a very accurate or precise daily or weekly um projection. But I can tell you like you know generally the market is very so I don't think like Apple is ready to all time high when it was at maybe one sixties or one seventies. I foresee some downside. But to put a timeline to that, I think it's very, very difficult. So come back to your videos, right? Uh, you are doing weekly videos and then, of course, there's some uh, research behind the scene, right? So can you walk us through uh, in terms of your process from idea generation? How do you generate ideas and then how do you actually analyze things? Or maybe we, we can take one or two uh, of your videos and maybe you can help us to dissect like what runs through behind the scene uh, when you created all these videos. Just, just to walk through the process. Huh? Okay, um, the initial stage when I was doing all the topics to help um, beginners or fellow newbies like me, the process is um, I just uh, treat myself as like a super newbie who just started investing like on the first day or first week. What questions would I ask? Yeah, so based on that, then I, I, I uh, came up with the topics and then I do the scripting and, and the usual stuff. Recently, uh, when I you know pivot over to this weekly analysis, the whole process is actually quite quite structured and systematic. So every weekend I will just sit down and then do a very quick recap of what happened last week and then uh, what I feel will happen in the next coming weeks or months or maybe maybe not a prediction of what happened, it's more of like what are the things to look out for. So it's like market outlook. So it's a market recap, market outlook. Then I will dive into uh, technical analysis. Uh, basic ones, uh, I'm, I'm not that uh, experienced. It's very, very basic um, technical analysis. So you guys can check out any of my uh, last two videos uh, if you want then of course end of the day i will share my end thoughts so four segments are market recap outlook technical analysis and then my end thoughts so when we talk about all this let's say market outlook right i, I saw one of your videos you talk about like federal reserve what was the fomc meetings what are, are they going to hike rate or not these kind of things uh, basically can be summarized in broad category of macroeconomics right do, do you think all these macroeconomics actually helps when it comes to investing does it, does it actually help us to generate more returns are you a believer of that or or not that's a very good question. Uh, in fact, I think I posted something similar on Momo. Uh, uh, I think right from the start, when, when, because I'm a long-term investor uh, gen generally, so I, I do uh, the basic research uh, right from the start and then uh, focus on a few companies that I want to buy and invest in for the long term. Uh, so, but to me, a, a personal view, it's uh, as much as... Um, no, I mean, I can put in a lot of effort to do fundamental analysis on, on a particular company, but I feel uh, macro environment does supersede um, fundamentals in the short term yeah and this is where i will accumulate shares because when macro factors kick in uh, market will be bearish uh, there will be um, you know falls and or rather like crashes uh, they call it the, the, basically the, the market can plummet can plunge so i think this is where i am very busy um, collecting and uh, picking up accumulating shares so yes, macro factors do affect the stock market in the short term and that's when I get busy. Then uh, yeah, in the long term, I think fundamentals will outweigh uh, the macro. Uh, that's what I feel. But there are people who really don't believe macros, right? They say, anyway, this is really unpredictable and then inflation is not something that we can forecast uh, accurately, right? Uh, and anyway, if we are able to do some forecast and accurate enough, it could be already priced in, right? So in, in other words, it's just like saying all these things is not helpful at all, then we shouldn't focus so much. But uh, it seems that you think that it will affect, but do you think that this will help us when it comes to like generate more returns? In terms of generating more returns, um, I, I would think yes, because when macro is weak, um, market will plummet, right? And that's when uh, valuation may become... Um, you know, relatively cheap. Say, for example, this year's um, valuation for you know um, S and P five hundred, maybe for some of the mega cap stocks, versus last year November when they were all time. Hard. I mean, uh, in a way, uh, this year the the stocks are cheaper lah. But of course, this is um when everything else is is, is constant lah. Okay, at end of the day, I think macro does does play a very important role in affecting the market it will also affect the valuation so some may argue that uh, when the macro is weak or, or when inflation goes up interest rate goes up it will hurt the company's earnings so actually when you get the apple or tesla today it may not seem as cheap even though the stock price is lower than last year 
but the one will did you will need more in-depth analysis so i will not go into the detail but anyway to really answer your question i think when yeah the market is fearful or when it plummets um i will pick up more shares and i think in the long run it should help with the returns uh, that's my personal view lah. thanks thanks <laughs> just now you mentioned you are long-term investor right so at, at the same time you, you said you are into technical analysis yeah. there are people who believe that as a long-term investor you should just do company analysis and don't spend so much on looking at charts right because charts are mainly for traders lah. i think this is actually uh, commonly understood and, and agreed right so i just want to get your view like uh, when you are doing all these technical analysis are you looking it for your like some kind of short-term trades or or you are actually using TA for your long-term uh, holdings as well? Interesting question. Yes, I think first of all, I, I quite like uh, TA and I do use TA for both short-term and long-term trades. Uh, for long-term trades, how it help is um, maybe, maybe if you really look at things in 10 years time, it may not, it may not um, matter. But uh, in my view, if say for example, Apple, when it was in the 160s and 170s plus, I use a bit of basic technical analysis. I know that there is this um, downward trend line where it always meet and hit and it always get rejected. Yeah, and then, you know, there are some gap ups and usually they say 90% of the gaps will get filled. So when it has this parabolic run recently to 160s, 170s and hitting the resistance, my view uh, is that based on technical analysis and the macro, I feel that it will come down. But as to which week or which day, that one I can't answer. I do feel that at that point that like, it will come down and indeed right now Apple is at sub 150s yeah so this is how I apply uh, technical analysis for my long-term uh, trades so I would rather pick up Apple's uh, Apple at like 140s or sub 150s versus 160 and 170 likewise for Tesla I think now post split is uh, sub 300s but I do believe that it will fall below 300 in the near term I don't know when so I'm actually queuing up at certain target prices that I have set yeah, but maybe to people, it may not matter because one day, if you are a Tesla bull, one day you feel that Tesla will hit 400, 500. So whether you pick it up as 300 versus 250, it may not make a big difference. Yeah, but to me, if I can pick up, I mean, if I have this little knowledge, it helped me to save that 50 bucks per stock. Uh, why not? <laughs> That's my view. Lah. Wow, thanks, thanks for the details, uh, <laughs> explanations. Okay, <laughs> just now, I mean, du- during breakfast, we, we talked a lot about uh, all sorts of topics, uh, but I think one thing we didn't touch on is talking about your own portfolio. So, so you mentioned that you just started not too long ago in investing, right? Just a couple of years, or maybe later you can explain more. And then, uh, just want to know, like, okay, maybe we b- break into two parts uh, the long term portfolio, what are you investing in, and then what's the what's your thinking process behind all this investment, and then, ma- la- then later we, we can talk about like the short term uh, portfolio. Okay, a uh, long term portfolio. I think I am a risk adverse uh, investor. It's just as boring as going for the top few companies in US. Don't get me wrong. I always feel that sometimes you don't need exciting stuff in certain aspects of your life. So, boring can be good. Simple can be good in in certain things. So for investment, I feel uh, long term investment. I think that's that's the case. So um, my portfolio, I can review. Uh, I am heavy on Tesla. Uh, I'm also a Tesla bull. I think I would say a good 60%. This one we didn't talk about it during breakfast. The rest is about maybe 10% Apple, uh, 10 each for Apple, Microsoft, and Google. And uh, the remaining uh, 10% is really the the other stocks like Nvidia. I have Meta also, I'm a backholder of Meta. I have Bank of America. Yeah, it's very insignificant uh, because the 10% is really broken down into these few stocks. You have like individual picks, right? What, what do you think about S&P 500? Why don't you just buy like an index? Because I hope I can uh, outperform the index. <laughs> That's why I, I pick stocks. And um, I, 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 I think I, I like to read into uh, individual companies. Lah, and I also believe in their mode and everything. So uh, if you know what you're doing, then why not just go for what you believe in of course the most convenient way uh, maybe to newer investors is just buy the index it will likely not go wrong because in the long run uh, it will it will go up right the u.s stock market unless like super black swan event happen and money should be the, the least of your concern but s p 500 is um, self-cleansing so in a way yeah if you're a lazy investor you don't have a lot of time to commit then maybe index could be one for you 
just now you talk about Tesla, like 60%, right? Can I understand that this 60%, is it like mainly come from the money that you put in? Like really you put 60% of your money in? Or is it because it grew to 60% because you invested earlier? And, and just now you haven't answered uh, since when you, you have uh, invested, right? How long have you built a portfolio? Okay, to be very precise, I actually invest for a year only. Yeah, so my, so to answer the part of whereby Tesla is it, you know, uh, did it grow to 60% answer is no because if you backdate one year ago it was September last year yep. uh, the market was actually quite high of course it hit its peak in November so that period I I, I do it I, I bought stocks um, in, in tranches you know a bit like September October November so generally my um, uh, stock price for some of these stocks are quite high okay so for this year I mean I did uh, average now I did average down for some of the stocks, yeah. But uh, I w I would say actually sixty percent is really uh, the cash that I've put in lah. It's not that it actually grow to that extent because I didn't start very very early when Tesla was very uh, relatively cheap. My next question is I I saw recently I think it's uh Stanley Drunker Miller right. He said probably uh over the next ten years over the next decade right the stock could be just flat because uh right now we we started at an uh, interest rate level that is relatively low and it seems that now interest rates just keep going up and up right so just for example the one year uh, US Treasury rate just hit 4% and I think the 10 year rate is also about like 3.4 or 3.5% right so we haven't seen this kind of level and it seems that this uh, U increase ha hasn't stopped right and usually this will be quite painful for the tech related uh, stocks right so do, what, what's, just want to know your outlook not in the in the sense of short term like longer term right like three five years right are, are you like ready to see like the companies that you pick right for example tesla and all these tech stocks right let's say if they just have a like a 20 30 40 percent kind of crash over the next few years are you ready to see that or are you expecting that uh, and what's your outlook mm, that's a very deep question <laughs> okay um i i think uh i i of course, I can't predict what will happen uh, for the next three to five years. But uh, my view is, uh, I think Tesla should do okay, and that's the reason why I pump in uh, sixty percent allocated lah, sixty percent of my portfolio onto Tesla. But as for the other mega cap stocks that I'm holding on to, uh, I can't be very sure because uh, yeah, like what you said, um, experts are also talking about it. Hey, you know, stock market could be flat in the next couple of years. So. Uh, my point is my time horizon is relatively long. This money that I put into the stock market uh, is really meant for the super long term, like I'm talking about seven, eight, or even 10 years. So yes, it could be flat even for the next 10 years, the lost decade. So I think that's the thing about investment. Uh, it's about managing risk. It's not about avoiding risk. There's no risk-free stuff. So of course, the more um, emergency, emergency fund or fund that I need to have a bit of liquidity, I will uh, you know, maybe go for like Singapore savings bonds whereby you can withdraw almost any time. Yeah, but this money that are in the stock market, I'm prepared to put it in for really, really quite a number of years. And uh, specifically for Tesla, I really hope, based on my thesis, uh, in the next three to five years, there should be some decent returns. Uh. Since we are on Tesla, right, can you like uh, explain uh, in simple terms, right, what is the main thesis behind Tesla and why, why this company will like be a successful investment okay um i actually have done two videos on this um maybe some of the info could be dated but a uh, long story short and a very summarized version i think this is we, we are experiencing this uh, vehicle uh, automobile replacement cycle uh, i would draw reference to when apple took the mobile phone world by storm and i think tesla is doing so as well so it's like the entire industry is undergoing this um massive change and I think one of the videos I mentioned that Tesla is actually a generational company so when you talk about generation company right it's something that probably you only see once or twice in your entire generation it could be 30 years 40 years or even 50 years so we just look at Apple's um, dominance but uh, I think of course some people say you know um, you can't just always pick the success story to to compare but at least based on my research I do feel that this is really uh, quite a similar uh, case uh, it's a, it's a very similar case to Apple's uh, case. La. That's why I feel. Uh, I, I really think Tesla is really taking this EV world by storm. And of course, other than EV, they also 
have um, a lot of other modes, you know, in terms of their uh, supply chain, etc. Um, not going too in-depth, lah. Mm. Yeah, but that's about it. But what are their strongest modes, uh, in your opinion? I think there are, there are various areas. Um, I think they are growing at a pace that nobody can match at this point, And they are seizing a market share much faster than a lot of all these um, ice, ice um, companies. Uh, those companies that produce um, ice cars. Yeah, and um, actually a, a lot is a combination of a lot of things, you know, their factories, the way they expand, their growth, their, what I call it, vertical integration. Yeah, um, yeah and, and visionary leader. So for me, I always look at um, a combination of uh, various factors. So all this add up, I really don't see um, someone that is closely behind Tesla at this point. You talk about Apple as well, right? So, if we, if we would just compare Apple versus Tesla, yes, Tesla is still early in the uh, growth phase, right? I think in terms of the EV, EV is just like very small market share at the moment, and it's going to grow. And of course, Tesla is riding this wave, right? So we can all understand this is a generational growth companies, right? But Apple's, when we talk about Apple's, I think there are quite a number of people actually believe that there's no more growth. Is this is a mature market, and yet you are still investing in it. Uh. So I just want to. Yeah, I like just want to know what was your thesis behind Apple and is, do you have any comment with regards to the statement that I just gave on, on uh, Apple, which is like slow growth companies? Okay, for Apple, right, um, there are two reasons why I invest in. I think number one, uh, yes, of course, their growth uh, is not as fast as before. But actually, if you really compare their product line over the last 10 years, right, you will realize that they really venture into different products. Like in the past, they don't have Apple Watch, they don't have all these wearables, they don't have Apple TV, they don't have all these services. So if you really look at their balance sheet, all these are racking in money as well, other than iPhone. Of course, iPhone do, um, iPhone does play a uh, biggest part uh, in, in, in their balance sheet. So yes, I, I feel they are still growing in other aspects. So, um, sorry, just suddenly thought of a few points on, on Tesla, because they are not just focusing on EV. Uh, you know, you have the Tesla boards, all the robo taxis and all this, but some people may think it's still very fluffy because we haven't really seen it in, 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 in motion. So uh, I, that's why I didn't want to dive into that. So, okay, going back to Apple, yes, they have different product lines uh, and they are still trying to uh, grow uh, on top of their saturated phone market. And then uh, one thing about Apple is uh, they have very, very strong loyalty. You see iPhone 14, actually not much changes, but people are queuing up. Yeah, yeah. So it's on a very uh, sustenance mode. And the second reason why I invest in Tesla, even though the growth is stopping or, or slowing, is it's like um, Apple is the biggest US company. Yeah. What, what can go wrong? If this one really tank and then, uh, of course I don't expect like what, very high returns, 20%, 40%. But if it doesn't give me uh, returns in the next five to 10 years uh, as the biggest company in US, then uh, I just feel it's a relatively safe uh, company to invest in, in, in my view, lah, not a financial advice. <laughs> yeah. okay. So just now briefly, we talk about like you have this uh, like a Mumu account and then you have uh, like you are writing some comments on the platform and then try to help out with the newbies, right? So and you also do some videos talking about TA. I'm sure that there will be traders who are watching your videos to get some insights, right? Uh, but based on your engagement, uh, let's say, do, do you have any message or anything that you want to share or talk to the traders? Uh, like just to, to anything, I right? just want to, what's your message to them? Okay, um, I wouldn't dare to say advice, but maybe um, some views for new trade, new investors and traders. Okay, so maybe for new, new long-term investors, right? Um, I think one uh, view that I can share is, uh, uh, in view of the recent bearish market, right? I think my view is, um, don't bother um, checking your portfolio um, every day because that is like checking on a tree every day to see whether it's growing. So I think this is one that I have learned. No point checking every single day. If you invest in a good company, the tree will grow well. But if you check it every day, you can't see the growth. Yeah, so that's one view I think I can share with newer investors. And also I think the mindset, it should be um, build wealth slowly and not get rich quickly yeah so that's for investors for traders um actually i i this is why what, what i learned through um options trading if okay for me i sell options contract i write option contracts 
but I know a lot of people like to buy options, you know, buy puts, buy calls, especially buy puts in this bearish market. Uh, but somehow invest, uh, traders can still lose money by buying puts in the bearish market. You must be surprised, right? Okay, so here's one um, okay, not advice, uh, uh, view is uh, when you are buying puts or call options, try to give yourself more time. Uh, I know some traders, they do zero DTE or uh, even like a very short few days. So try to give yourself more time because my view is that when you are holding on to option contracts, you are like holding on to melting ice cubes. You are like holding on to ice cubes. It melts every single second. So just like your option uh, contracts, when you're holding on to them, it melts every single day to time decay, theta. So this is one thing I learned uh, that, um, that I can share with uh, newer traders. Yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, maybe just round up a general view for traders and investors. Uh, stay humble. If not, the market will humble you. That's what I can say. Really, really, you thought that hey, you, this, this market will really fly or maybe plunge after the CPI report or whatever. And then you could be wrong. And, and that's why I think it's always important to stay humble and then uh, embrace conflicting views. Yeah. And um, if you disagree with this... Um, uh, statement of staying humble, I mean, that means you are not humble enough. <laughs> the stock market will humble you in time to come. Yeah, that's that's all I have. Well, thank, thanks a lot for all the good advice. Uh. But just curious, right? Have you met many arrogant peoples? No, la, uh, I, I, I don't. La. But just that um, I think um, a lot of times, uh, both long-term investors and short-term traders, they have this um, bias. They always feel that you know, this market for sure will plunge tomorrow or for sure will fly tomorrow. Or CPI is lower, confirm will fly, but why did the market uh, plummet? So, yeah, I think not to have the bias is very important and then learn to accept uh, conflicting views. Law. And uh, I think don't try to make sense of the stock market. You know, there's this quote like, market can stay irrational longer than you being uh, insolvent. So, yeah, don't try to make sense of the market. Watch how the market moves, then you ride along with it. Don't try to predict like tomorrow uh, it will confirm drop by X percentage. Uh, let the market makers go first. If they want to sell, they want to offload their stocks. The market is straight. You ride with the trend. So just now we started talking about uh, your uh, YouTube channel and then you also share about like you are basically a YouTuber, right? Although you don't show your face, right? Uh, but just want to know, like, because we might be uh, revisiting, let's say, this video uh, when you are still in the early phase in your journey, right? But in terms of the channel building, uh, how you build a channel, is there, like, is there anything that you want to get out of it and yeah, what was your vision on, on your channel? Wow, that's a very tough question. <laughs> so as mentioned, initially I really just wanted to help newbies, but then because of time commitment, I, 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 I realized that I can only do this kind of weekly analysis. So what I, can, what I hope to get out of this channel is uh, of course have some uh, followers, uh, like-minded people who enjoy my video and then we can exchange and bounce off ideas. Then of course, if let's say one day my channel um, grows bigger, I really hope I can go back to my initial intention to really create very fundamental videos to uh, guide or share my views on very basic financial stuff with newbies. But uh, of course, if let's say some of these viewers follow me because of my weekly analysis, I will definitely still want to keep this segment. Uh. Yeah, so this is what I hope. Uh, I can ho hope to grow it, have some like-minded people to follow me and exchange ideas. Uh, not thinking to grow into like super huge channel and earn a lot of money. Uh, that's not my intention. La. I don't think I can get rich out of this channel. La. <laughs> who knows, who knows, right? Yeah, things will change. All right, I think uh, we are close to the end of the interview. Uh, it's a bit noisy here, so <laughs> we will just uh, like uh, stop here. But I hope that we were able to meet again and hopefully next time when we are having interview, you are able to review your, your, your face. Huh? <laughs> Alright, uh, see you in the next one. Thank you, thank you. Uh, subscribe to my channel, please. Um, I need some support. Thank you. Definitely, uh, please subscribe to Jay's uh, channel and hope you like this video. Thank you.